Labour faces a showdown next year with a delegation of Caribbean nations who want to submit new demands for reparations to Britain. Fifteen member states of the Caribbean community, that's CARICOM, they previously set out demands for um, uh, repri reparations. Uh, they, they wanted to bring it up at this this, this Commonwealth meeting as well. The government, the British government said, no, we're not discussing, it's not on the agenda. But uh, we've got Baroness Scotland leaving as the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. There are three contenders, all three of those contenders who, for that job, one of them is going to get the job. All of them have voiced their support for slavery reparations. Well, let's talk about this with Rafe Hadel Mankiw. He's a historian, he's also a senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. Rafe, a good afternoon to you. Pleasure to be with you. Um, we've, I mean, the reparations issue has been coming up for quite a long time. It was very much something that started in America about, you know, how black uh, Americans, uh, you know, African Americans had, had largely come there, populated you know, from slavery and, and, and how they'd been treated since. And bearing in mind, you know, the civil rights movement was, you know, not, you know, not far out of my own, my own lifetime. Um, but this call from Caribbean nations for Britain to pay slavery reparations, I mean, it's beyond absurd, isn't it? It's absolutely obscene, particularly when you hear some of the sums involved. One was nineteen trillion dollars, yeah. you know, which is more than the entire wealth of this country. Yeah. I mean, I did, was, was, could I put that on my bank card? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's more than the entire wealth of China. That's what we're talking about here. Look, <clears throat> reparations are fundamentally a matter of tort law. That's T O R T law, and the purpose of reparations is to put the victim back into the position they were in before the harm was caused. Yeah. The problem is there are no victims of British Empire slavery alive today. You know, slavery was abolished in 1833, it's 200 years ago. And the British government have already paid huge amounts. You know, they paid £20 million, a sum equivalent to £20 billion today. It was 43% of the entire budget of 1833 to liberate the slaves. They then paid 2% of GDP every year, a sum equivalent to our entire defence budget on the West Africa squadron to enforce an end to the slave trade yeah. on, the, on the oceans. And in 1840, Prince Albert apologised for, for the horrors of slavery. We had, I think it was the first time in history that a nation deliberately made itself poorer yeah. in order to advance a moral good. Yeah, to do the right thing and with massive support from ordinary British people as well. And again, it's this idea that, and, and so many people are just historically ignorant that, 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 that there were no slaves ever apart from when it was the, uh, the, 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 the transatlantic slave trade, it was uniquely white people selling black people for their... No, no, actually, white people have been slaves for many, many, many centuries and many millennia. Slavery no, has no. been at the heart of virtually every single empire that's ever existed, but we're the first empire that actually ended it. The lot of the anger about this is that we cost us a lot of money. Yes, but we paid reparations to the slave owners, not the slaves themselves. But there was good reason for that. We had to do it. Unfortunately, in, in life, we have to deal with realpolitik. And even though Britain was, you know, the most advanced democracy of the time, we still had a very corrupt parliament. We still had rotten boroughs and so forth. The only way the government was going to be able to actually pass this law through was by buying out the slave owners. Yeah. So not an ideal situation, but, you know, the, the good came out of it, and that was the liberation of the slaves. But, yes, at the same time as the Atlantic slave trade, one million Europeans were enslaved by the North African states of Tunisia and Morocco and Algeria, the Barbary slave trade. Yeah. Should Britain now be asking North Africa yes. for reparations? Yes. But also, why, why does no one, whether it's in America or in the campaign is there or the Caribbean, why are they not asking for reparations from those countries whose leaders sold uh, their their ancestors exactly. to slavery because they weren't being rounded up by you know the West India Company was making all the money from it they were being rounded up by uh, their fellow countrymen or other tribes uh, as well I mean you know it does and again when am I when am I going to get my reparations uh, from the Romans or the Vikings this is so absurd this is all about sort of like the guilt climax but frankly it's also a grift isn't it but let's be honest it's a grift this is a oh our countries aren't as poor as they should uh, they should be aren't, aren't as rich as they should be they're poor it's your fault because you you ran the colonies. It's all your fault. Some of these countries, like Barbados, is actually a very wealthy country now, and the Barbadian prime minister is very much leading this call. Um, but the countries that aren't doing well, you know what? You've been free for 50 years. You had plenty of time to improve the lot of your people. If you haven't done that, that's on you. Yeah, I mean, look, the Caribbean nations are middle-income countries. Most of them rank higher on the Human Development Index than Brazil 
or Mexico. And that's because of their British colonial inheritance. Wherever you go in the world, the countries that were former British colonies are almost always the richest, the most stable, and the most democratic. And you mentioned Barbados, right? You know, the slaves in the Caribbean came from West Africa, you know, places like Benin. In Benin, the, uh, the annual uh, GDP per capita is $1,400 a year. Yeah. In Barbados, it's 17000 Yeah. Benin life expectancy is 62. It's 15 years longer in Barbados. So by every measure, the lives of the descendants of slaves in the Caribbean are infinitely better than yeah. if their ancestors and, had and never again, left. Africa. And no one alive today, or even their grandparents, would have been would have been victims of slavery. I mean, just find it really briefly. Um, do you believe that Keir Starmer, they say they're not going to look at this. Uh, we've already had, you know, the Archbishop of Canterbury offering money. We've had some silly rich families saying, oh, we feel guilty about what, what our families did. Um, I, I, I have a funny feeling that Keir Starmer and his government would like to pay slavery reparations. He'd take the knee, he'd hand the money over and say, oh, woe is me, and hit himself over, you know, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, a, a branch. I mean, because he wants to assuage his white guilt. Um, what do you think the chances are we're actually going to see some payments made? Well, I think you're quite right. I think Labour would love to do this. I mean, look, they're taking down portraits of William Shakespeare, yeah. for example. I mean, Elizabeth I, Walter Raleigh, because of links to, alleged links to slavery and so forth. But I think they know that it's electoral suicide were they to do that. Because, you know, the reform is, you know, biting at the tail of the Labour Party in so many marginal constituencies. Yeah. And that, this would really tip the balance. I so they would love to do it, but they won't. Rafe, I completely agree with you. I think that would be the case. Rafe Hadel, thank you. Thank you very much.